yeah let's start now <clears throat> so uh, i am teja so today we'll go through about a brief session on uh, anal analysis and analytics so i uh, will have a little background of taking up this session so uh, whenever uh, like uh, we, we we take a session uh, whether it's an online or a classroom the first question uh, comes up with every student's mind is so we we hear a lot of analysis and analytics so we know about business analysis as you guys are uh, aware of that uh, we have been trained in that at the same time we also hear the words like analytics business analytics we we listen the words like business intelligence data analysis data analytics data science this all about confuse us because there are a lot of buzzwords which are which we are hearing uh, in and out there and we are confused what is all all about right so this session is uh, aimed about to give an overview to give an insight about what is this all about in a bird's eye view in a high level perspective the the at the end of the day at the uh, like at the end of this session the aim is to uh, you guys will walk out of this session with an uh, understanding about what are this all analytics and analysis stuff is all about okay and also uh, the expectations that has to be uh, for this session is we don't go in depth about everything we go about a high level view and also uh, one, at the end of the session uh, you are free to ask me questions i will have more about q and a so there is less of presentation from my side and we'll have given more space to uh, q and a question and answers are we good to go any questions uh, the screen is splitted i guess uh, can you please uh, do make it one screen is it uh is it fine now it is looking same now again okay give me a second then i'll yeah is it fine now yeah i guess we should begin now it's fine no problem yeah yeah uh, uh are you able to see it clearly now yeah we are good to go you can like proceed no problem okay thanks so uh, as we know that uh, uh, as we discussed that there are a lot of buzzwords which are going around us right uh, we uh, we often hear about business analysis uh, we we come across the words like business analytics business intelligence and as you see that data analysis data analytics data science so there is a thin line of difference between all of this right and and also there is a little confusion that uh, whenever students come to the class that they say that uh, so you teach here the business analysis course but one of my friends said that uh, he is taking up the business analytics course what is the difference between that uh, are they same uh, are they different so uh, the idea is like uh, 
there is a big deal of difference between that so we should be in a position to understand that what is the difference between all of this and we also have to make sure that where we are good at that so that uh, we can choose our career in that direction right so uh, as you all are business analysis students i'm not going to stress more about what is business analysis right so we'll discuss more about other topics like business analytics and data science and then you can correlate about your knowledge on business analysis how these are different from the business analysis right so uh, before going ahead uh, uh, a little brief about business analysis I, I expect you guys will tell me about right so what is business analysis so analyzing the business understanding the clients requirements uh, in one word you can say that understand the problem of the customer analyze them and come up with a uh, solution which solves that problem right it's more about an analysis understanding the problem of the customer analyze them and come up with a solution to solve that problem and that solution is always beyond the IT perspective right we design an IT solution to the client which solves the problem that's what a business analysis is all about and it is not related to the data it's more about uh, giving an IT solution to them so uh, in, in business analysis as a so those who perform a business analysis we call them as a business analyst so uh, as a business analyst what we do we gather the requirements from them and we analyze those requirements and we prepare different documentations uh, and con convey those requirements to the clients uh, sorry convey those requirements to the technical team we let technical team to deliver the product as per the client expectations and we give that product to the client as a business analyst we do that so now what is business analytics then so business analytics is nothing but when we heard about something called as analytics uh, there is a lot of technology has been involved in that right so as a part of analytics we do a little of analysis but with certain technologies where data has been involved so what we do is we as a part of business analytics we investigate the past business performance so how do we investigate the past business performance with the data so with the data of uh, previous years let's say i want to see that sales of previous years uh, what is the profits of the previous years how is the relationship between the sales and the profits so uh, we use the different technologies to understand to investigate the past business performance and with that we'll get an insights about uh, future business performance so it mostly involves uh, data and reporting so a business analytics as someone who works on the business analytics or a business uh, intelligence be mostly concerned on the from a business perspective i have to prepare dashboards so when you are talking about dashboards it involves data i have to prepare a reporting tools how to develop the standards for reports and metrics so as someone a business analyst who works in perspective of a business analytics he should be a subject matter expert in the data right so uh, if you are preparing a, a reporting tools or uh, if you are preparing a dashboards uh, then by using the uh, past data historical data and making sure that uh, we we are uh, we are uh, getting the insights of the future business performance we uh, that branch is called business analytics or business intelligence and different companies interchanges that uses so business intelligence someone asked that have you ever been worked in a bi have you worked in a business intelligence so business intelligence is nothing but a group of technologies which uh, uh, work for the business analytics like SAS, like Power BI, like Advanced SQL. So these are all like Informatica. So these are all the tools uh, which helps us to perform the business analytics, which helps to do the reporting, which helps us to prepare the dashboards.
so these days uh, there is a less buzz on business analytics because previously there is nothing called as a data science or a data analytics that's why there is a lot of concentration on the business analytics which is typically related to only my business perspective i did not consider any outside factor i only take the past historical performance of my business particular to specific field whether it is a finance or marketing so i i cannot go diverse whereas a new uh, area came into the picture that is called data analysis or data analytics a person who performs that role called as a data analyst so what is a data analyst do so it, it typically there is two types of data unstructured data and the structured data so the first major role of a data analyst is to we gather the data then uh, next is called the data cleaning or a data cleansing that is uh, keeping the data in a structured format gathering the data keeping the data in the structured format it is so that it's easy for us to analyze analyze the data and the interpret the data so mostly for a data analytics we use the descriptive analysis so what does a descriptive analysis talks about we get the insights from the historical data that's why we said that it mainly deals with what happened so far so that we can identify the trends so uh, data analysis is mostly used to solve the business problems with the data so ga- data gathering as you, as you know that the another technical term called for a gather uh, data gathering is data mining so what we do data mining mining is nothing but getting the data from the different sources and we store that data where we use the uh, tools like big data how do you pen all that that is called as a big data storing the huge amount of data so uh, after that we clean the data we analyze the data by using the different uh, techniques and we interpret the data now so we we'll let us go with that and after this we'll discuss with few examples which have been worked and for that particular example how a business analyst uh, and how a data analyst and how a data scientist would have been preferred and after that if you have any questions we can discuss now who is data scientist guess any guess mm-hmm. any person who has worked yeah a, a person who has worked on um, data finding a logical interpretation of the data right so now we get uh, as you said that uh, someone who works on the data and find the logical interpretation of the data yes we call them as a data scientist so there is a thin line of a gap between a data scientist and a data analyst so we'll discuss that a difference once we complete about uh, data scientist but yes so that data analytics is a subset of data scientist sorry uh, data uh, analytics so parent is a data scientist whereas data science whereas child is a data analytics so as we discussed in data an- uh, analytics we'll try to get insights from the historical data and find to that particular area we try to identify the trends whereas uh, we go out of the box right as the name science there is data science science means what going out of the box so trying to connect the dots interlinking so how do you connect as you said that's a logical interpretations so data science can be used in different fields now when can uh, why do we need a data scientist then? right uh, we a data analyst is in, is in, enough for every organization that because most of the organizations will for, work for a, a problems related to them they have a defined problem and with the data collected 
uh, they identify the trend and come up with a solution. Then why do we need a scientist then? The world has become very fast. Now, every company is looking for a problem solver. And how do we solve that problem? That problem solver should become a trend in the market that which keeps that organization is gives the first mover advantage. So if you are a problem solver, uh, then we are in. So every company is looking for a problem solver. And if you are the problem solver and which had great knowledge on data, then yes. So let's take an example guys. Now we know right, right? So what are the future areas to increase the revenue opportunities with iPhone? We, as we know that uh, iPhone works on the premium segment. And always remember that uh, a data analysis starts with the business case evaluation, right? If, if there is no business problem, there is not required for a uh, data scientist. If there is a business problem, right, then a data science uh, scientist comes into the picture. How can I solve that business problem uh, by using the data? Now, let's take an example of uh, what are the future areas to increase the revenue opportunities with an iPhone. So this problem is faced by the Apple few years back. Now, there are at that point of time, there was a fierce competitor from the Samsung and Apple uh, iPhone works on the premium segment. How can I increase the revenue opportunities with the iPhone? There should be a differentiator. There should be a value addition. They cannot just add one or two small features and put a premium amount from them. So, any guess that how a data scientist solve that problem? Any guess? There would be many. By being more innovative? Yes, of course, yes. Uh, by being more innovative. That innovative should be, cannot be on par with anyone. That, is, that innovative has to be out of box. That no one has been imagined before, right? That is where if something if we produce that no one has been imagined before, then we can put a good uh, premium for that product. And you know what iPhone came up with? Siri. Right. So now we know that uh, Google uh, uh, and all that. Right. Uh, uh, but before that, uh, Google Voice and everything came into the picture. Alex and all that. Who is the player which uh, iPhone has been uh, associated with Siri? Everyone talks about Siri. Then how Siri works? It is not someone. Uh, uh, it is not someone who just prepare, right? Siri works. If you clearly look into the Siri, the Siri works on voice recognition. To prepare a voice recognition, data scientists come up with a technology called as NLP. If you have heard about NLP, NLP talks about natural language processing. So if we talk about hey Siri, what's the temperature today? So it is processing our language, right? If it is understanding our language and convert and moreover uh, converting it and giving us an answer which is understandable to us. How does uh, a, a, a technology, a tool can understand a human voice and how can it give a response? Right? So, Yes, all this. So how does a technology came which recognize the human voice? So it, it gives a loss of buzz to the iPhone saying that yes. It gives, uh, uh, yes, uh, there is a device where we don't need to touch the keyboard. We don't need to do anything. We just uh, the phone lies somewhere. I just call it a city. Just like our friend, it responds immediately what you want. How does happens? They, they get a huge amount of data analytics or data science, we call it as they collect huge amount of data where what are the common terms used by the humans? 
if if i'm talking with you my friend if i'm talking with my wife if i'm talking with someone else what type of the common things i generally use it they collected all this data it's not a easy one right uh, they collected huge amount of this data and also they analyzed what are the answers to this data and they trained this machine with an artificial intelligence if you get this type of a person the answer should be in this direction and the siri is the first product uh, which gives give which uh, shows the world the power of nlp which is a core of uh, data science we'll discuss about this part much more clear i'll give you what i have worked uh, in my organization uh, on this uh, natural language processing the other question is let's see how can i give best results to users this is simple like so this is more generic how can we give a best results to users so here again a data scientist comes into the picture as as we know that uh, data science is nothing but taking the historical data and it does not confine with that connect the dots how can i uh give it to uh how can i interlink in such a way that uh, it gives a best results for others so if you take here i'm sure that most of us use the gmail right so if you remember that uh, i just copy pasted one of the conversation with my student here if you see here below one of the student asked me to send a document which have been talked to them uh and So if you see which you are explaining every day worksheet so it is auto given the gmail has given me auto reply i will send you the details thanks a lot thanks for uh thanks for the information and all that how does gmail know about this so here the gmail previously they worked with natural language now it is transcripts it is called as a data transcript that means your machine is able to read the content what you said this reading is not only the part is able to understand and understanding is the toughest part and again it is able to give you the answer and if i am there i would definitely uh type the uh, reply to that mail something related to what it is given there right how does a gmail able to do that that is about a data science so that means it is able to read the content from your side analyze them and come up with a solution and come up with a answers for that so simple what i do i just click on that and send that mail will uh, go to the recipient so here we have to look at the at the role of a data scientist here how does the machine is able to previously it is nlp here now data transcripts that means we call it as a data transcript that means uh, it is able to read the transcript content so here uh, the different uh, algorithms like machine learning deep learning comes into the picture clear yeah. so we see it every day right i just give a couple of examples uh, for you guys to make you understand this and we'll discuss few more examples now there's another problem that how can my how can i understand customer better let's take an example of uh, i always teach this example in, in my class uh, let's say we all know about uh, this uh, shop uh, like you know apparel stores like big apparel stores like uh, I, what is a central what are, what else are there so uh, we have central we have shopper shops right uh so there was a big uh prop under con confusion or let's say what whatever the yeah uh, big bazaar good so there are lot many things we have right there are lot many stores and we know that uh, they are giving a good customer experience that is not enough how can a central or uh, differentiate itself from a shopper shop how can a, a central make me to uh, compel as me as a customer to go to their store and apart from money 
right? And apart from the offers, how can they uh, compel the customer to visit their stores? How can they differentiate it with the software stock? Right? So always remember that a data scientist, every time comes first thing about a business uh, problem. How do I understand my customer better? Give a 50% off. That is normal, right? But how can I differentiate? Everyone gives the 50% off. But what else? How can I understand my customer? And how can I increase my revenue? Now, the data scientists have taken up that challenge. You know what they have given us? A face recognition technology. So face recognition, we know that how the face recognition works, right? We always use our mobile phones using the face recognition. As we know that previously, uh, when we used to uh, want to tag our friend in the Facebook, how do we do? We have to type their name. Now, when we upload a pic of our friends in the Facebook, what does Facebook is doing? It is asking us to giving the friend's name, should I tag his name? And it is Facebook claims that we are 99.5% accurate. How does a Facebook recognize the our face and clearly gives us is that the person? Because our face uh, changes a bit, right? It's not that uh, my face will be the same after five years. But uh, still, after five years, if I put a pic, uh, still the Facebook recognizes. Uh, let, let's say if my friend uploads a pic, still my Facebook recognizes the face and tells that should I tag that person. And the tagging is 99.5% accurate. The suggestions given by the Facebook. So that is called a face recognition technology. Now, how does a data scientist use face recognition technology here in the super stop, let's say in center? Now, what they do is, for example, we have an Allen Solis store in, as in a central, or let's say we have a Park Avenue store. Now, what they do is they you they have they can they kept the CCTV or a let's say high definition camera there. What they have done is whenever a customer come to that uh, place or whenever they look at uh, come to the place, there definitely there would be a facial expression, right? Let's say that facial expression would be the price is very much high. Our expression would be oh my word too too high, or if. Uh, if, if there are very less variety of uh, variants, then our face would be a di disappointing one. Something, whatever we are feeling inside, our face will tell that, right? Now, what happens uh, every time a person cannot walk to you and ask you that, what is your satisfaction levels? So, what happens if I capture the face, facial expressions of the uh, customer and I decode that facial expressions? Right. So what they done is uh, they just capture the facial expressions and use the artificial intelligence in that. And if you see here, but that artificial intelligence is it tells about the gender and what your facial expression is. Are you happy? Are you sad? Surprised? Angry? A lot of variants. And tomorrow, let's say that if the prices are too high or the variation, like the number of varieties are very less from that expression, they understood that uh, maybe this gives a business case to them and they found that that yes customers are not satisfied because uh, by these facial expressions they are angry or they are sad that means either the prices are high or uh, the variety they are fine they're expecting is less tomorrow they will refill their uh, uh, you know the store or they will reduce the price so that's what uh, that is this data analysis gives you to the customer, sorry, uh, to the company, right? It is easy for them to analyze the customer without even asking them. So how to surprise my customers? So uh, as we know that there is a surprise element. If someone surprised us, we come up with a lot of enthusiasm, right? Uh, we come up with some satisfaction from ourselves that yes, this is unexpected surprise. So previously, uh, 
uh, the Nike, uh, as we know that they come up with here, I have given an example of Coca-Cola, but we can also take up an example of Nike. What is an Nike has done that? So, whenever a, the customer uh, comes to close to their store, let's say half kilometer, 500 meters near to their store, Nike is auto detected the signals and a separate a separate offer will go to the particular the person only saying that uh, so and so Nike story store is near to us and you know uh, take a 30 percent off especially designed for you how good is that how cool is that that means in Nike is knows know that you are near 500 meters to them and it is asking you to come to their store and by giving you that uh, I'm giving you 20% off. These are the varieties, variants and all that. You get a message from the Nike. This is what happening in the US now. It will go to come to in, in India soon. That How does a Nike knows about that? We are, we are near to that store. That is uh, part of a data analysis. Now, how to predict the diseases? So uh, apart from this, uh, there is a huge role played by the artificial intelligence or you know data science in terms of disease predicting the disease i would like to give you around three examples two examples two are one is what which i worked on and other one is which my friend is currently working on so uh, as you know that you know kosla is the founder of uh, sun microsystems and the sun microsystems uh, which is prepared Currently, uh, they introduced Java, right? As every software engineer knows about that. What does he said that in next years, 10 years, data science and software will do more of medicine than all of biological sciences together. School, right? Let me give an example, uh, which I worked on a data science project, I think two years back. So that is for the uh, US uh, healthcare uh, hospital. Uh, they are highly specialized in kidney care department. That means they have around 4,500 kidney care hospitals, clinics, I would say, in US. And you know what is the uh, business problem they've given to us? Or what is the business call they've given to us? They want to reduce the dependency of doctors in the hospitals. School, right? It's a hospital. They said that you want to reduce the number of uh, doctors or a dependency doctor dependency of doctors in our hospital. So how can we do that? So they tell us that leverage the data science. So it is a kidney care uh, department. So it, it is a kidney care uh, clinic. So they are they're highly specialized in treating the kidney alignments. What, they, what we have done is we took around 25 years of data. So 25 years of data, that means uh, what are the different alignments given by the patient faces and what are the different lab reports uh, suggested by the uh, doctor and what are the different medications given by the uh, doctor. So the aim is uh, the business solution which we are going to is in a high level uh, when a customer, sorry, customer here the patient is the customer for us so when a patient walks into the hospital so the first thing he do is uh, the patient goes to the nurse and gives his uh, symptoms or alignments what does a nurse do nurse will note down that symptoms and that symptoms automatically uh, goes to the lab system i mean as like it has been since the, the symptoms are stored in this system system will gives us what are the lab, uh, you know, uh, what are the tests that patient has to undergo? The same details will go to the lab. After the test has been conducted, the lab reports are uploaded by the lab technicians. System will read that lab reports and system will suggest the medication that if dialysis is required, uh, what uh, or not, if it is required, what type of dialysis is required by each understanding is the blessed, uh, sorry, blood flow rate, what type of uh, uh, that type of a dialysis he has to undergo. That means there are different types of dialysis where uh, dialysis machine is connected to the uh, forehand, uh, like in the hand, 
by connecting the arteries and veins whereas another another type is dialysis machine is connected to directly back to our kidney other one is dialysis machine uh, sorry machine is connected to artery next to our heart or a small chip inserted uh, into our stomach so this all will be given by the system and also what type of medicines we have to use how many times a dialysis has to be performed these are not given by the doctor it is given by the system and uh, at the trial uh, the idea is to the report has to be generated and send it to the doctor and the doctor will verify it and if the doctor feels it's fine correct then uh, doctor will authorize it if not doctor will change it so ideally there are around every day in the us a doctor can treat around 30 to 35 patients you know after employing this technology a doctor can be able to uh, check around 70 to 80 reports it's two is to one so one doctor lost their half of the doctors lost their job so this is how a technology works on right so uh, how does this happens how does system knows all this by incorporating huge amount of data and giving an interlinking about that if this is the problem this type of a medication has to be there with the machine learning or a deep learning algorithm that's what a data science has done that so how to increase the profits and how to decrease the losses and uh, this is the one of the best uh, uh, or like best indian organization which uh, we really like it because uh, if if we go to the store if you ask uh, like you know if you get a want to get a emi or you know if you get uh, that product uh, for uh, you know uh, for 6 months or uh, one year emi or if for any loan bajaj fins out takes exactly 2 and 1/2 minutes to either to grant you the loan that means in 2 and 1/2 minutes it will go through all your uh, past data uh, and your capability and all that and it gives you so previously if someone wants to a loan it every bank or any financial organization used to take a lot of time and that's why uh, they are only confined to the particular financial organizations but when the bajaj things have came to the market there is nothing called as instant loans right they have given they have come up with a concept like that they have revolutionized the way a customer buy the capital goods bajaj things are is there in every small uh, stores how does they come up with they highly used uh, this data so what are the major focus areas we have used uh, we use the uh, as a data science scientist they use a lot of statistical uh, analysis so statistical is nothing but a statistics right so they use statistics as we know that uh, there are descriptive statistics de uh, descriptive analytics predictive modeling uh, there are we use different types of histograms bar charts this all comes under a statistical analysis hypothesis so this is a part of mathematics where a mathematics is linking with the technology and we should be good at visual analytics what is a visual analytics talks about previously we do entire coding but how do that result comes the human brain uh, is learn to understand the diagrams better right and graphs better rather than a big document so if i want to see the different sale uh, how the sales has been impact in last 5 to 6 years if i see that in a graph i can understand better rather than if it is given on the board so that visual analytics uh, is the part of this data science and we use different tools like tableau quick view and all that data cleaning or data cleansing as you know we know that there is a machine learning and other concept called as deep learning deep learning is ahead of machine learning and there are different languages like r python and these days there are different tools like uh, spark scala uh, and kafka and all that so these are all the tools which enhances um, uh, a person to do the data science now so as we discuss about this now let's take an example of how does a data scientist or a business analyst 
a data analyst or a data scientist uh, differ. So uh, the process which I've worked as I tell you that healthcare project where we are automating a uh, disease recognition uh, in a particular hospital, I worked as a business analyst there. So what is my role there as a business analyst? So uh, as you know that you guys are budding business analysts. So I, I would like to learn from your side that. So if you are joined as a business analyst, so what is the expected role in that project? Anybody guess? As a business analyst, uh, what do you do in that project? If that type of a project. So uh, gathering the requirements. Yes. And designing the solution. Good. So as I told you, right, the process, a patient, a patient walks into the hospital uh, and do all that. The, uh, uh, at the end, it, it concludes with a document and all that. This all the process has been designed by the business analyst. Right. So and also the requirement gathering. So what is the requirements here? If if I go to the client and ask you gather the requirements, what type of requirements I get it? So the requirements are are like here the system able to capture uh, patient details. The patient details has to go to the no, sorry uh, lab system has to understand the lab details. System has to give the uh, required medication. Right. The report has to be generated. So uh, these all are the requirements. Who gathers these requirements? It gathers the business analyst gathers these requirements, and based on these requirements, right, we design a solution and give it to the data analyst. See what we do. See this is what the expected business problem, and this is what the expected solution. Please, um, this has to be delivered, and please do what uh, it is sufficient from the data perspective, right? So this is the role of a business analyst in that project. So what is the role of a data analyst then? So data analyst, now data analyst says that I have to gather the data, right? So we data analyst gather the data. Let's say if it is required 20 years or 24 years of data, that, that data is unstructured data. So what they do is that they can they convert that number of years to let's say 20 or 24 years of it, data which is properly it's not there which we don't understand anything huge amount of data what they do is they make it as a structured one that that is called a data cleansing now or data cleaning then they analyze the data and they interpret it so with the interpretation we cannot do anything right that's till that role of a data analytics if a if it is a data scientist then data scientist will use the machine learning and uh, deep learning techniques by using different tools like R, Python, uh, and Kafka, and all that. What they do is they predict the future. If this is comes, what should be the outcome, right? So they do is they do the data validation, they do the data visualization, and they predict the future. That means, as you know, that data analytics is a subset of data science. Data science is just going ahead and we are predicting that that means they, they prepare an algorithm if this is the case they should happen if this so uh, if the patient comes with so and so problem the, uh, the system has to give the these are these are the medication that we have to use that is the role of a data scientist there. so we start as a data analytics career if required then we go have up to the ladder and we can we can become the data scientist so what we do is we use the combination of outcomes uh, from the previous data and we use the computing reasoning uh, which uh, we add a logic part in that right yes uh, any, any questions no In any, uh, I'll give you uh, one more, uh, let's say, one more project. Let's say, currently we are working on a transcript data. So, what does a transcript data talks about? So, 
that would be an extension to, to this. Uh, so this transcript data, we are totally worked on a financial perspective. For example, as we know that we have a quarterly earnings, right? Uh, this quarterly earnings, you know, how does the quarterly earnings uh, will take place? Uh, the top level management like CEO or CFO, and the, they come out to the media and release the press release and they give you the all the quarterly earnings data. So we are working on developing the software where the system will auto uh, we record that presentation and system will auto convert that uh, voice into the data within few minutes. If that is the case, that is okay. But what if what the logic which we can get it? So for example, uh, system will predict that from last eight quarters or 10 quarters, uh, currently the CEO uh, is uh, like, you know, uh, going at a rate of 80% from the previous eight quarters at a speed of 80 percent that means previously they, they the CEO has to go on different speed now the speed of resulting giving the results are slow as we know that right if you're not confident if you're feeling bad or uh, if you are feel, you know feel that we missed something i am not that enthusiasm right i we generally talks very slowly so the CEO is giving 80 percent uh, the speed of uh, results are 80% 80, 80 to the uh, previous, that means something is bad. I can expect that. It's good that, right? Uh, then uh, if I give that data, then I can sell, sell that share. Expecting that, uh, there is, Siva is going to announce something bad. And also, if I'm not confident, guys, uh, let's say if you ask me a question, if I'm not confident of answering, what, what do I you do? I use the lot many words like, Oh, yeah, yes, I feel like something I try to uh, come up with an answer, right? So this system also try to catch all these words from the CEO. Is he bragging out? Is he giving a straightforward answers? Uh, or uh, is he uh, using more of the syllables? Then yes, system will predict uh, CEO using more of syllables. That means uh, he's, he's going to give you a poor results. Then yes. I can use that in the share share market. I can yes, I can expect that yes, this is not time, not right time. Let's say CEO is going 120% speed than the last three quarters. That means he's going to announce something good. It's so good for me. I can buy the share. How cool it is! And also, I just giving an example of uh, most of the time uh, last uh, five to six quarters, CEO gives most of the presentation. This I don't know why uh, most of the answers questions are answered by others. Some that means CEO is trying to avoid the questions. That means something not going good is going on. So these all are predicting by the system. So these are cool stuff which have been uh, going on uh, in the market now. It's all done by the tools like data science. So how can if you want to become a data science, you have to be good at both things, statistics and uh, we have to be very good at uh, working on the tools like R, Python, uh, this is uh, Anaconda is also into the market and advanced version of Python. Uh, so, and all that. So, there should be things we have to keep into the mind. Uh, what is the difference between someone talks about business analysis or someone talks about data analytics? we should be in a position to understand that what are all these about. So as a business analyst, what should I learn? As a data scientist, what should I learn? As a business analytics person, uh, what should I learn? Yeah, any questions? So yeah, this is the high view, uh, high level view, which uh, I thought of uh, 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 giving you so that I, you, know, the, you guys uh, will have a brief view about data science and data analytics, business analysis and business analytics. I'm not stressed on business analysis because I know you guys are experts in that. Yes, uh, podium is open for questions. Uh, if you have any questions, guys, I can feel free to ask me.
Any questions? Yes, having taken a course of business analysis or as a business analyst, am I uh, eligible or will I be able to take up a job with data analysis? Data analysis? Or do I have to take a separate course? Okay, so uh, uh, if I'm right, uh, you, you, you said uh, your question is like, let's say, if I'm the business analyst, I'm, I'm a uh, get a take a role of a data scientist or a data analyst am i right correct yes so so the first step of data analyst is like you know a business analyst as you as you said that because we understand the customer we understand the customer's problem so we are pretty good to become a data scientist but with the knowledge of a business anal anal analysis it is not enough for us to become a data scientist so or data analyst we can stop till understanding the customer problem, but that is not enough. We have to learn how to read the data. To read the data, we should be very strong at statistical uh, analysis. That means we have to be good at statistics. Uh, and if you if you are very good at statistics, then uh, the next step is how to use that statistical knowledge uh, in programming. So these are two things we should be learning programming that means how do you write the code in python how to write the code code in r r so if you are good at coding but if you are not good at uh, that statistical tools then no so we should be good at both i should be having a knowledge on statistics i should be having a knowledge on uh, r in python that means then we can club it together with the knowledge of business analysis that means i can understand the customer problem and i can know that how to derive a solution to that problem then that makes a perfect match to become a data scientist. So to become a data scientist, we should learn two other two new concepts called statistics and uh, programming. Have I answered your question? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So one more uh, question I've seen in the chat is what is the difference between data analysis and the data analytics see actually it's a very good question data analytics starts with the data analysis so uh, analysis is nothing but uh, what is a preparation uh, work whereas analytics is using the tools right so analysis is nothing but for example how to take the data uh, how to transform it how can i uh, use the data to get that solution but i cannot do that uh, without a technology right so for example uh, how to get an insight from the data i need a visualization tool like uh, i like tableau or uh, and there are a lot many tools in the market that comes under analytics without using the tool i cannot analyze i know how to use the tool but i don't know how to read that uh, charts so reading the charts comes under analysis whereas uh, using that tool uh, where are using that data comes under analytics. So data analysis is a subset of analytics. So if I'm doing a data analytics, that means I'm doing a data analysis. So we are utilize how to utilize that data uh, in, in a technological perspective comes under analytics. So if, I'm, if someone says that I'm doing a data analytics, that means I'm doing data analysis also. Any other questions? Yeah, so guys, uh, before uh, uh, letting you have come one question. So I just spoke with my friend who is working in US. Uh, so he is working with uh, a company related to the Google, these guys, they like, I just want to share you that they're doing one very good, cool stuff. And he's a data scientist there, you know, he's working on predicting the heart attack. So how they are doing it, 
they are integrating as we know that right there is a bridge bands we have um, we, are, we all these days we, are, we all became uh, geeks in fitness so most of us whether we are doing the fitness or not but we we are the uh, fitness bands so uh, they are using that fitness band to predict the heart disease heart diseases heart is heart stroke so how they are doing it so uh, that is called iot internet of things they are linking uh, they are using the iot concept to predict the heart disease heart diseases so they they use the huge amount of uh, data uh, of uh, patients who have having the heart attack or someone who suffered the heart stroke that means someone who is suffering the heart stroke what does these uh, their body how does their body reacts 15 minutes before a heart stroke what would be the temperature what would be the heart rate what would be the blood flow rate what is the flow of sweat uh, how does uh, their pulse rate differentiate it's cool right if you have all this data and what they have done is they do the analysis and, and they have done the uh, deep learning to that so that if any if any of that body goes through that particular changes system captures that yes uh, this is how uh this is a at least symptoms of heart attack but how can i make sure that uh, future prediction now what they done is they have used the concept of iot they have integrated this data to a wrist uh, band that means the wrist band collects your data 24 by 7 that means uh, every minute it connect it collects your uh, a uh, pulse pulse rate every minute can show blood flow rate every every second it connects every changes in the body and the data will be sent now for example uh, now in next 15 minutes you will get a heart attack that means your body undergoes a changes now since it has been auto coded the wrist band is an artificial ai wrist band now because of that machine deep learning or machine learning the that the it is equal to the uh, body changes you have then the wrist band identifies that yes uh, uh, he is getting there is uh, he is having the symptoms of heart stroke then remember that if the wrist band has been integrated to your friends or to your personal mobile phone or to your hospital how cool it is uh, if may A call automated call will go to the hospital near the hospital using the GPS saying that so and so person will get a heart attack in 20 minutes, or your near and dear one says that his body is having a heart symptoms of heart stroke. Uh, please take care of yourself, or a message to yourself that, and or let's say that please visit the doctor immediately. We can save a person's life. That's what we know. Also said that uh, next 10 years, uh, data science will do. more research on medicine than a total of uh, you know biological researchers too yeah any any questions uh, i i think i have given more examples on this any questions guys Is there any specific data analytics tools for uh, banking domain? Uh, yeah, so no, there is nothing really specific because data, uh, like data analytics, uh, is open for all the fields. That is, for data analytics, there is nothing differentiating between is it a healthcare related data or a banking related data. Data is data for everything, right? So only thing is, is up to the data scientist or a data analyst. Is, Analyst, how to structure that data? What is the outcome which I am looking for? I am very good at using the tools, but I don't know what is the expected outcome. Then what is the point of using the tool? So it is goes to the knowledge of a data scientist that what is the expected outcome of this data. With that expected outcome, we have to structure that unstructured data, and uh, we have to bring up the desired results. So that tool is same. There is no different tools for different. Uh, 
uh, uh, different domains uh, the data analysis works common for all the domains so let's say if there are huge amount of data coming from different uh, uh, let's say coming from uh, different sources and that has to be uh, identified get to the common platform so which type of a tools I have to use so in respect of that sources and huge amount of data whether it's a banking or healthcare or uh, consumer retails currently I use the Kafka tool and I use the spark to send that data to the respective source to read that data and to store that data I, I may use Hadoop so uh, it would be the same uh, for all the domains okay yeah. thank you yeah any questions if not then uh, uh, i can sum some of this discussion now and i would say uh, thanks guys for all uh, for waiting for this session i know that we have some technical glitch and we made you to wait for half an hour but yes uh, you showed your patience and you know we are really grateful for that and it is really appreciated Okay, guys. Then uh, thanks for joining. Thanks for joining. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, so so, so feel free to give your comments uh, on reviews and all that. Uh, we would like to uh, know your reviews, guys. Thank you. Have a nice day.